By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you magic from the Raging Bull series in Amsterdam. And we are on round number three. And this game is between the Italian player Matteo against the Dutch player Thijs. Now before we get started, I just want to take a quick glance at both of these decks. So let's start by looking at Matteo's deck. So he's playing with Mono Green, and that means four London War Elves, uh, some scavenger folks, probably a lot of creatures, so he wants to put early pressure on the board. Um, but he's made some interesting choices. I believe he's also playing with giant spiders, so I'm looking forward to see those. And with Gaia's Avenger. And Gaia's Avenger is a green creature for three, so for two forests and one, you get a 1-1. One, one. And as you can see, it kind of has little stars there in the right corner. And it says the stars below are the number of artifacts opponent has in play. So it's it's pretty cool because in old school, people are playing with a lot of artifacts. So I'm really curious. So hopefully, Matteo, you get to cast the Gaius Avenger. And I can actually see it in action and, and see how this card uh, functions and in an old school environment. Really looking forward to that. Now, let's look at the deck list of Dice. So uh, he's playing with a deck that he calls The Force, and it's actually a three-color deck. It's white, it's red, and it's green, and it's full of beefy creatures, like you've got Force of Nature, but you also have Sheevan Dragon. You have Sarah Angel, and a card that I find really interesting, and I'm going to pay some special attention to in this match, is the If Biff Freed. So that's a 3-3 flyer from Arabian Nights with a build-in hurricane mechanic. So it's going to be interesting to see if Thais can kind of uh, get control of the game or if he loses before he can get control because I'm expecting Matteo in this matchup to be more of the aggressive player and then Thijs, you know, building board presence wants to go to a more control uh, mid-range kind of situation here. So the longer the game is going to take, the more advantage, advantage it is uh, for Thijs, I think, but we'll see. Let's quickly go to game number one and see how this matchup works out. Game number one, and I believe it's uh, Matteo, who's sitting on the left, who's on the play with his Adventures Green. And of course, he has something to do in game one, because he's playing Mono Green. And there's the Black Vice. Now, that's a great start here for Matteo, passing turn to Tice, who's instantly going down here to 17 life. And let's see what's going to happen next. So it's up to Tice now to kind of empty his hand. Oh, but it looks like it's not working. He's only playing a basic planes. And it's ideal playing those vices when you're on the play. Ooh, and there's a Urnum Jin. And we've seen this often. And he needs the swords here. He first takes three more damage, so he goes down to 14. Ideally, he would have been able just to play a, a swords on the end step of Mateo, and that would also take care of the creature and... Um, would save him one life. Oh, and I like this. There is a spirit link on the Ernie here. An Ernum Jin, actually named after Herman, an acquaintance of the creator of the game. And there we see Matteo is going to do a flip on the spirit link. And we couldn't really see it there, but I assume that they could see it, and it's a hit here on the Spirit Links. The Spirit Links gone, so that's four more damage, and it's not looking good here for Dice. He's taking two more damage from that Black Vice, and the Black Vice alone has done him eight damage in total. And then you add up the four damage from the Urnum, and you go from 20 all the way down to 12. And this is just his third turn, and there's so much pressure already on the board. He needs a balance, but he's playing a Lanawer Elf, and he's passing turns. So at least with the Lanawer, he can buy himself one more turn, having to chum block the Urnum. And let's see what's going to happen. It feels like we've just started with this first game, and it's, it's already almost over. And he's attacking, and he has to block. So there's a chum block here from Thijs. And what can Matteo do next? I, I, I kind of expected him to maybe also attack with the, uh, with the other elf, but he decided not to. He's taking a damage here. 
And there is a four mana spell. Is it going to be another Urnum? No, it's going to be the book, the big book, the tome. Always good when you're playing green because you usually have a lot of mana when you're playing mono green. Passing turn and end of turn, there's a lightning bolt. So at least that saves him one creature, but the biggest problem, of course, is that 4 5 Urnum. And at least he's not taking any damage from the vices anymore because he played that lightning bolt. So maybe that was even more important. Oh, this is interesting. So, I mean, he, he's facing down. He's looking at two black vices and yet he decides to play the wheel. So that means that the cards in his hand weren't going to save him. And he's, of course, looking for a way to deal with that Urnum Jin. But even if he manages to deal with the Urnum Jin. Uh, he's just playing another chum block here. I wanted to say even if he manages to deal with the Urnum Jin, he will go down to six cards, which would mean he would get four damage from the vices, um, still bringing him down from eight to four life. But it looks like he's getting another turn at least with chum blocking the uh, Urnum Jin again. And that's exactly what happens here. Tice is blocking the Urnum Jin, so that's bye bye Lunar Elves. Another black vice, and that means potentially six damage here for Dice. Now remember, oh, there's a storm seeker. I like this, Matteo. I, I have to respect your build, man. You're playing storm seeker main board. That's pretty cool. You don't see that. And um, I mean, he's going down to two life, and I think he's dead now. Or okay, he can still play a disenchant. Truly, can do that. I'm liking this, Taz. He's trying to stay alive, but it's not enough. He still has five in hand, and with the double vice means two damage here for Taz. But wow, Stormseeker main board, Mateo. That's so cool. And hopefully in, in, in game number two, uh, we can also see a little bit more of Taz decks because I'm really looking forward to seeing some Sheevan Dragons and some Force of Natures hitting the board. So let's let them sideboard and start with game number two. Game number two with Taz on the play, so that may help, especially... When we think back of all those black vices that Tai saw, at least this is a much better start for Tai with a plateau and a mox emerald. So the green mox there. And let's see if Matteo can have another explosive start. If he's actually going to. Well, he is keeping it, I guess, because he said, you know, because they're already playing. Okay, that's a forest. And there's a Lanor elf. So kind of the opening you want to see. Oh, and there's also a Mox from his side. And there's a Scavenger Folk. Again, a very good and explosive opening here from Matteo. And let's see what Thijs is going to do here. So it's Italy versus the Netherlands. And Thijs is playing a Balance. Nice. And he's discarding a card himself, Thijs. I believe that's a Plateau there in the corner and Matteo is losing two creatures but it looks like it doesn't really matter there's the elves of deep shadow and a black vice uh, no damage here for Thais from the vice this time and just black vice kind of loses so much power I feel when you're not on the uh, on the play but when you're on the draw and there's a tap for four, and there's another Urnum. So an Urnum Jin, the four or five powerhouse from Arabian Nights. And you, you see the Urni a lot. You see it in a lot of builds. And there's the Spirit Link again. And remember, in, in game one, of course, Matteo was lucky with finding... Uh, oh, and there's a Tranquility. I wanted to say with finding that Chaos Orb, because there are not that many weapons against enchantments. Uh, in green, I wanted to say, but of course you have Tranquility, and Tranquility takes care of the Spirit Links. And Matteo probably boarded in some extra Spirit Links after, um, you know, after that first game where he got the information that Thijs is playing with uh, Spirit Links. And this is a nice play here from Thijs, playing a Bolt over the Elves of Deep Shadow, and he sorts to Plowsiers over the Urnum. Does mean that Matteo gets four life, but Thijs is removing creatures like crazy here. And so, he's on 23. Took a damage earlier from the Elves of Deep Shadow. And there's a Disenchant over the Mox. He 
He wants to make sure that Matteo cannot get to four mana again because then you have the danger of the Urnum reappearing. There's an Ice Storm and there's Elves of Deep Shadow. So this is looking good for Tais because now he's, he's able to kind of stabilize the board to stretch the game. And there is a play here. Oh, and there it is, Gaia's Avenger. And Gaia's Avenger is now a 2-2 because there is a Mox on the side of Tais. And a Force of Nature. So I guess Gaia's Avenger versus Force of Nature. In this case, the Avenger is not going to win. But what a cool board state. Look at this. You've got Gaia's Avenger facing a Force of Nature. And let's see what Matteo can do. He's playing another Gaia's Avenger. Go Avengers! But I believe this um, this Force of Nature, he's going to do the job here. He's going to attack here, 8-8, eight, eight, 8 damage. And this is what you want to do when you play old school magic. You want to cast the Force of Nature. Very cool, Thais. And, and there's the attack. I mean, that's probably all that Matteo can do. Um, he just has to hope for Chaos Orb or for something. And there's the attack here, 8 more damage. And he's down to 5 life. And, and that happens. 16 damage dealt by the force of nature. And there's another force. Taking a ping here from the Elves of Deep Shadow. And I'm curious to see what he can cast. If he manages to play an Urnum, uh, he can block his Urnum and his two Avengers and then kill the force of nature. If he has one, of course. And that's exactly what he does. So he plays an Urnum Jin. It's a 4-5. And this is interesting. All of a sudden, Thais has to think, am I going to keep my Force of Nature as a blocker or am I going to attack to up the pressure or maybe draw into some more removal? That would be the best answer. And he's deciding to keep the pressure on. So here we're going to see a nice triple block. And it's up to Thais to divide the damage. And... I think that's the best choice, killing the uh, Avenger. And the uh, the Urnum. So there's the attack. The Avenger is going to, is it actually going to deal some damage here? And it is. So that's two damage for the Avenger and a giant spider. And what Thais needs is another powerhouse. He has enough mana. Give me a Sheevan Dragon this time. That would be really cool. There is something coming. There's a Sarah Angel. And now we've got our classic situation. Uh, when I was a kid, I had this board state often where I had a revised giant spider facing a revised Sarah Angel. Oh, and this is nice because with double giant spider, you can actually kill. They can eat the Sarah Angel and uh, Matteo will only lose one giant spider. It's so nice to see so much like combat creature action going on. And there's a Mox. That means a pump for the Avenger. So the Avenger is now 3-3. Three, three. And there's a Wheel of Fortune again. And remember, um, I mean, this is also good for Matteo because he's drawing seven cards. And um, so despite the 16 damage done by the Force of Nature, uh, Matteo is still very much into this game. Although Thais is playing with red, so we could see some direct damage here. And there's a Spirit Link. And does this mean that he is playing to attack? And he is actually. So he's willing to do this. Gaining four life, and Matteo losing just one spider here. And what is Thais going to do next? Tapping again. Oh, cool, another force of nature. So you're playing two force of natures in one game. I'm, I'm really liking this. This is great. Um, so we're looking at the 3-3 three, three adventure, a giant spider, elves of deep shadow. Oh, and there is a chaos orb, so it's going to flip here. And it hits the Force of Nature. So Force of Nature is out again. So two Force of Nature is taken care of. And what else can Matteo do? So all of a sudden it's Matteo again who has the advantage. And he plays an Elanor Elf there. Attacks. And he's taking the damage. Going to seven. Remember there is that Black Vice. I'm not sure how many cards Dice has in hand. I believe it's five or maybe six. He's now on seven. It's going to six, so that means he has five cards in hand. Now drawing card number six. And Thais must be thinking, what, what am I doing wrong here? I, 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 
It, I managed to cast a force of nature, a Sarah Angel, and a force of nature, and my opponent is still not dead. So let's see what else is going to happen here. Is he? Oh, he's attacking with the Lunar Elves. Interesting, he has a Pendlehaven to make it a 2-3. That's exactly what he does here. So the Elves of Deep Shadow die. And then he's playing another Lunar Elf. And can he find something impressive to keep pressure on the board? And I feel that, you know, maybe for when you're playing with Force of Nature, you do need Berserks. Maybe he plays with Berserks, I'm not sure actually. And there he's pumping the Mishra's Factory, realizing as well that, you know, he's on four, but Thais is, is also on six, so Thais will be forced to block here. Probably he's going to use his Strip Mine on the Mishra's Factory. And playing, oh, playing a Crumble over the Mishra's Factory there. And that's really nice when you play that on a Mishra's, because your opponent doesn't get any uh, life. And he's kind of forced here to take a chum block, and he's going to three. Because he's taking two damage from the Giant Spider and one damage from the Lunar Elves. And another Elves of Deep Shadow. Oh, and this is not looking good for Thais. He's still in it, but he needs to... He needs to play creatures, because there are just too many creatures on Mateo's side. Let's see. And he's playing a book. <laughs> it's a little book from the Antiquities. And you can activate a draw card and then you have to discard a card. He's keeping the tension here on the board. And can Thais manage to get this game to a 1-1 one, one and, and, and get it to a final third, a third game to see who wins this match? I mean, there, there are so many creatures here from Mateo's side. I mean, Mateo's deck is kind of asking the opponent to kind of play a Wrath of God or a giant earthquake or something. Curious to see. Oh, of course, yeah, the, the Gaius Adventure gets another plus one, plus one because of the book. So it's now a 4-4. Four, four. And playing a strip mine, and of course he's using it uh, on the Pendlehaven, and then activating the Pendlehaven to give his Lanor Elves two, three, and of course he's just going to attack. It's interesting here that he doesn't attack with the two Elves, or does he? I think I, I think I just would. I mean, worst case, he's just going to block one, and he can't really afford that anyway. He has to chum block the Gaia's Adventure here. Actually, he's going to die. Does he have some instant removal? I think this is game. He's on three life. So choosing to attack with that extra elf is actually costing him. No, there's a lightning bolt. And of course he wanted to keep that lightning bolt to, um, uh, to kill Mateo possibly. But this is so cool. He's on one life. This is exciting. And, and I think Thais needs direct damage, but I'm not sure if he actually plays a fireball. I know he plays lightning bolts. I don't believe he plays a fireball. And an Earthquake cannot save him here. And let's see, what can Thais do? This is his last chance, his last turn. Playing a Spitting Slug. Fantastic creature, by the way, Spitting Slug. But that's it, so I think, I think Matteo, you got this. With your Avenger here, attacking. And there's a lightning bolt going to one, and oh, no, no, no. And I guess he just drew that lightning bolt, so that's very unfortunate for Thais. But uh, Matteo and Thais, thank you for these games, man. They're so much fun. Seeing Gaia's Avenger, seeing Force of Nature, Spitting Slugs, Giant Spiders. Super cool decks, super cool decks. Um, thank you. Thank you for this, and good luck uh, in, the, in the rest of the tournament. And this was a great round number three here from the Raging Bull series in Amsterdam. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you would like to see some more old school magic, there are some links appearing on the screen right now. 
that you can click on to see some more games. And of course, you can visit the channel Timmy the Sorcerer and you can see some more old school magic. For now, thank you for watching uh, Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. Ik het was fikker te